Uh, obviously just happy for our guys that, uh, you know, they, again, they were able to fight back. Uh, you know, we took a pretty good shot by West Virginia. That was probably that first half. Their, their discipline on, on both ends of the court, their patience, their moving the basketball. Obviously, Taz was... Uh, you know, he was he was in a heat check and he made some tough shots. There were a couple times, Mike, just what do I do, coach? And he was right there with them, beside fouling them. Um, you know, there's nothing you could do. So we, you know, we gave up too many points, but they just played harder than us in the first half. And and our guys, again, I don't, you know, we brought the energy the second half. Um, thought the start of the second half we were pretty good on defense, but we went a little haywire on offense. Had some couple bad possessions where guys just were trying to make plays, get us back. And then we kind of settled down and, and, you know, good stops, got it tied, um, and then just increased it. I, we, I think we only had one or two times in the first half where we had two shutouts in a row. In the second half, we had multiple times, three, four in a row or more, that, um, you know, allowed us to make, get, to get a run, uh, you know, get to the free throw line. Uh, you know, that was a big emphasis. They – they don't let you run your stuff. So now get to the paint and, and be aggressive and be strong and, and, you know, hope they call fouls and, and we get to the free throw line and we, and we made them. Actually, our free throws shooting in the first half, Davion four for four, uh, some other guys. I think we were 13 for 14 at halftime. That really saved us. That kept us in the game because, you know, early in the season, some of those games, uh, we did not shoot the free throws like that. Uh, you know, and then finish with uh, 39 free throw attempts. Uh, you know, just being strong. We said be strong with the basketball. Marquise's line, uh, you know, for him, the efficiency is, uh, you know, unbelievable. His improvement, his growth, 7 for 11, 4 for 6 from 3, 3 for 4, 21 points, 3, three assists, no turnovers, and 3 steals. And, um, you know, and then Mark again, double-double. Um, they did a good job on Nigel. They got into him. Uh, they didn't let him get, they were physical with him. Uh, he didn't, you know, sometimes their teams are physical and then, you know, he gets loose and he's able to make some plays, but it was good for us to find a way without him being special. Cause he's had an unbelievable run. I'm not sure who made player of the week this week. Did he not? Or he probably should have, but, uh, okay. They given it to him so many times. They probably didn't think they could, but, um, Ish, um, you know, has contributed two games in a row, uh, which is it's good for him. And he's doing it with, you know, with being aggressive and getting the ball to the hoop and getting free throws. And, and uh, you know, and early in the year, it, he still shoot, shoots that flicker three when somebody's coming on him. I know the one he got fouled, but uh, he needs to be a little more patient with that. But he's just – he's giving us a little more uh, – being a little more aggressive, uh, getting to the basket – making some plays around the basket, but a good win. Um, you know, now we've done two in a row three times. Can we win three in a row? And that's to have, you got to have some discipline and consistency to go to Oklahoma State and have a chance to win on Saturday. Coach, I know you just talked about Ish a little bit, but he comes in here as a stretch four, starts in that role. Now he's been the biggest guy on the court at times. Is there any thought to maybe keeping him out there as the biggest guy more often? Well, we just, I think we're, you know, we spread people out. We're, we seem to be a little better on defense. Um, you know, when we have that smaller lineup, and we even went five guards a couple times uh, with, you know, now you got Selton back, and, you know, with, whether it's Luke or Selton rotating, guarding that. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's definitely a weapon, and, and we still got to believe in Davion Carlton. Uh, you know, Saturday you're playing real big guys that, you know, they, they – and then on Tuesday you got – Big McCormick who can make plays, but when you know when we need a change of pace and we need some some freshness, there's no doubt we can. You know it's been pretty good for us. It's been a good weapon. He's just got to realize sometimes when he he's got to go to the basket. He just can't keep popping when he's the biggest guy in the court. And then Nigel's been on one heck of a run. Um, I know he did some positive things tonight, but only finished with 13 points. What does it say about your team's depth to overcome that and still score uh, 78 points? Well, I, I, I thought that, you know, I said that we were able to win without him, his, you know, being magically special like he's been. Um, you know, every shot he's taken lately, it seemed like he's going in. And, uh, you know, they again, they, they were physical with them. They got size. They bodied them, stayed into them. But 13 Five assists, one turnover, six rebounds. You know, that's pretty good for a bad night. And, 
you know, and, and so it's, it's uh, I'm happy that we were able to win without him. And we've obviously we've made some strides because there's times early we would not have won games when when he wasn't, uh, you know, getting 18, 20 or more points. Uh, Mark Smith's seventh double-double yeah. uh, this season, eighth of his career. Just how impressive is that? Um, you know, he just has been very focused and consistent. Uh, I, you know, and he's, I, I told you guys the other day, you know, I think it was after Baylor, you know, he had a good game and then blah, blah. And then he'd come back and, you know, but what he's done, you know, and it's not like magical like Nigel's been where boom, 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 every shot, but – just that consistency, how, he, how hard he plays, how focused he is. He wants to do well. Uh, you know, 44 minutes the other night, 35 tonight. Uh, you know, just and, – and he gives us a versatile weapon because he can handle the ball, do some different things. Once in a while, you know, gets the brain fart and goes in too far and gets stuck and turn it over. But, uh, you know, I don't know – I know he was one behind Brockington – uh, going or last week, I, I'm not sure. I know Brockton had a huge game against us, but I don't know if he had 10 rebounds. But um, you know, he's it's it's impressive what he's done. And I think more than anything, uh, we had the program. One of the guys that he just flew in. He wanted to be here tonight, and he talked to the guys. But you know, out when we had those sessions back in the fall, Mark kind of rose up as the as the leader uh, of that. You know, that uh, different obstacles that we went through in adversity and I think Mark now you know he's not vocal over vocal but he's been very consistent about leadership helping us win doing whatever it takes to you know help us be successful so I uh, can't be more pleased with them what about the ball movement the last two games I thought you know again you know they they started it actually after West Virginia and um you know, they, we, I think I told you, I, I was in COVID. Most of the coaches were, we just told the players to do the, the, the video review of the, and they did a great job. They, you know, we've been emphasizing leadership accountability. They took up accountability, even our, our guys on the bench, the walk-ons, they might've had some of the better comments of the whole thing. But one of the things they all talked about then, one more pass. And that started with that West Virginia game. We got in the paint. We kicked it, somebody's open, they're flying it, somebody make that one more pass. And that, that ball movement definitely makes a difference. Uh, the cutting is better, ball movement, uh, you know, and it's, it makes us hard to guard. 78 points is, we had 35 at half, and I, our coaches were, uh, his offense is good. I said, 35 is pretty good at halftime. It's, we haven't stopped anybody. So that's big. If you look too, I, I told Wyatt, before the game, I thought bench would be important, and we get 17 off the bench, points in the paint. Last time it was drastically different, and we win that battle also. I mean, he's shown it all season, but I felt like it was extra kind of heart when Marquise went down with that injury and then had two amazing plays. What would you think of that? Yeah, you know, he, he, I, I've told you guys, and he's not perfect, but, um, and he has, some, he has some brain farts at times, but, uh, you know, it, when he does it, it's not out of selfishness or disrespect. He's just trying to go make a play. And and, and the, the biggest thing I, I've talked to him about, just you got it. You can't – every game is different. Every play is different. You can't get something in your mind. And you gotta, you got to play the game, and you got to be disciplined in the game. And even when he fouled and reached in, now he's got four fouls again, you know. So be smart. You can't – we need you in the court. <laughs> And uh, but other than those are the low brain farts, but he's he's made a lot of strides from the beginning of the year. You guys have pulled off double digit comebacks and back to back games now. I'm not sure when the last time that was happened, but what is it about the resolve of these guys where they, you know, that doesn't seem to bother them lately? Uh, and that's what I talked about, um, you know, and with Wyatt, uh, just there, you know, it, it takes focus and stuff, but it really takes composure and not panicking and staying the course, doing what you can. Uh, you know, obviously our defense much better in the second half. You know, you hold them to 31 and, and that, you know, and also, you know, and I talk about the play hard chart and it goes back to Hubie Brown. If you listen to Hubie ever go to a clinic, he talks about his chart with deflections, loose balls. Is their team ready to play? Are they active? Are they doing what they're supposed to? At halftime, they were kicking our butt. 30 to 20. They were on the way to 60, which would be astronomical on that chart. And in the second half, we we got 20. 
more and they only get they only get seven or eight so now it, we win that battle we win that play hard battle and uh you know and we got steals we got deflections got transition and that's a uh, world of difference and when you talk about coming back from those deficits and casey hasn't played in back-to-back -back games are things just going too fast for him with his knee right now I did, you know the other guys are playing well and you know we thought maybe if they stayed big and had two bigs we didn't plan it. Again, you know, we, we always talk as a staff. Um, we thought if they, certain bigs, we could even play Mark at the five. Other bigs, you know, we, you know, you could play Ish. Um, you know, so I thought Carlton, you know, first time he gets it, he makes a nice move. He just didn't finish. And, uh, you know, we, we still, we're going to need all those guys. And, I, you know, we got to stay positive with Casey and, and uh, hope he, you know, when he gets his chance, he's ready to go and he can help us. Coach, you finally get you finally get Selton Miguel back after a long injury. How, how does it feel to have him back? It, it makes a world of difference, cause especially his defense, how hard he plays. Um, he even goes in in the second half, makes a couple plays, gets to the hoop, didn't finish all his free throws. But again, he, you know, trying to get his rhythm back. Um, after Saturday, he came to our trainer Sunday. He goes, man, I'm I'm hurting, and I don't know. Now we didn't do anything Sunday. Um, at all with any of them so beside watch film and and walk through so um, he felt better today now we got to we actually give him really two days off Wednesday's totally or tomorrow's totally off Wednesday we're lifting weights and watching film and then come back and and uh, and then Marquise got you know he got they landed on him too and he probably sprained his knee or you know something I, I don't know and we'll see he'll be hurting them all too so I guess if there's a good time to have a Monday night game, this would be it to give us a couple days to recover. Coach, when you had that two-week stretch um, with the four, four losses with the COVID, um, you've now come back to beat three of those four teams. What does that say about the resolve of your team? You know, I, it, we've, I talked about the Chinese bamboo tree. We just keep growing, getting better. Uh, Marquise keeps growing. You just don't see it. You know, so it's just uh, – it is what it is. So – but he's grown, you know, just in his knowledge of the game and his discipline, all those things. And they, they, they've persevered. That's one of the words we've, we've talked about. And, you know, we're still, we're not there. We got a long way to go. And we've, we've taken some steps. Now can we get three in a row? You know, because this is, we're at Oklahoma State at Kansas. This is not uh, any easy thing. We can enjoy it, take a deep breath. But if we want to get where our goal is, uh, we really got to, we got to see if we can fight to get one of these next two to give us a chance to, you know, be in the top part of the league. Um, crazy thing, Wyatt said in the pregame, uh, since the West Virginia game, I think he said we were five and three, so now six and three. And uh, really, if you look at it, could have easily been seven and two and maybe eight and one. You know, but we aren't, so we got we still got to keep climbing. And um, again. You know, it's uh, it's not going to be easy. The, you know, nothing has been easy. Nothing's easy in this league. And every time you think you got it figured out, somebody screws it up for you. And then, you know, just it's kind of amazing how how it's gone in the league. It's uh, it's it's unbelievable. I talked to the announcers, and they one of them, and he's been around a long time, and this league's never never been this good. And uh, it's it's pretty amazing. And then uh, when you have a game with as many fouls as there was called tonight, how hard is it for you and your staff to adjust the game plan if you do that at all? Yeah, just make sure you get to the paint. We kept telling them, Mark's out of three. Hey, you know, it, you know I'm, if you're wide open, you got to shoot it, make good, good passes. But, you know, it's a physical game. Um, they, they called it on both of us. And, and you know, we got to keep getting – Mismatches, ball movement, getting the paint, and you, and you hope you can get to the free throw line and made them. Tonight we made them, so good focus for our guys. Just checking to see. It looks like you uh, you made more than West Virginia attempted at the free throw line, so that's got to be uh, beneficial for you guys and. Are you this good in practice at the free throw line? Actually, early in the year, we were really, really good. And then we had some struggles. Obviously, Mark did. Some of the big guys did. Um, you know, we, 
we tracked it. You know, we every day shooting about 25 at the end. And if you didn't shoot 80 percent, you had to stay and shoot more. Um, and we've kind of continued that pretty much all year. And, uh, you know, rarely it was a couple of the big guys maybe that wouldn't get to 80 percent. And uh, you can see how Davion's even looked good. I mean, it looked like he he knew what he was doing. He's worked on it. So uh, credit to all those guys. Um, obviously, I'd like a little more out of Davion at some some point. But, um, you know, just got to keep believing and helping and, and give him positive feedback. I went and gave him high fives for four free throws because it, it kept us in the game in the first half. And you alluded to Marquise Noel's play, but it seems like he's started to find – his shooting groove a little bit as well. Yeah, and that, it was really frustrating for him. Um, you know, again, take good shots, um, follow through, um, you know, and just keep working at it. He puts as much time as anybody. He's in the gym all the time. So it was, we, it was a game where Nigel wasn't making him, so it was, we needed somebody to step up. Obviously, he did. He had a huge one in, when uh, they went zone. And he, it was a bomb. Those are the ones he takes so much pride in. Um, and he hit that big one that kind of changed the tide. The first 25 minutes were a struggle on the offense for West Virginia was getting a lot of offensive rebounds and second chance points. But the last 15 minutes, it seemed like you cleaned that up. What was the Just thing the that? determination. We talked at halftime. You know, we were, they were doing a lot of isos and one-on-one. -on -one, and, and then we would watch them. The ball would go up and their guys are coming to the hoop, you know, and – and it was guards, the guards and, and Bridge, uh, Bridges had, had several, but eight out of nine rebounds, it wasn't the big guy. It was, <laughs> it was the guards getting them. Uh, Wilson got some and, uh, you know, just there were different guys that, you know, Wilson gets three, uh, you know, Bridges has four. You know, so those were the guys that uh, were getting them. And, you know, I was at halftime it was one of the things we talked about. You know, ball goes up, you got to look weak side, we got to go find them because they're coming. That's one of Hugs's, Frank's things, the, you know, that, that basketball family that coming inside out, come baseline in, and that was always something that they've done well. And, uh, you know, we, hopefully we adjusted to it. Was the bench a little extra fired up today? It seemed like they were ready to yeah, run on the court. Yeah, they brought the energy. And actually, the guy from the program, Max, said, <laughs> you know, you got to bring that energy earlier. The officials just said, we don't care if they cheer, but they can't yell about calls. And that's why I had to go off on them a little bit. And, you know, I said, you know, they're, they're happy we made the, the call and he, or made the bucket. And he said, well, they're also not happy with me. So, you know, you just, you know, cheer, be excited, but, you know, don't be a don't be official. So, um, you know, they they tried their best. It was a hard game to officiate. Very, very physical.